the ambassador, Martin Indyk, former ambassador, and of course, ambassador to Israel, but now a fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations. And it was Martin Indyk who led the last uh, promising, at least, peace talks between the Israelis and the Palestinians, or at least was the U.S. coordinator back in 2014. It's been that long. It's so good to see you again, Ambassador Indyk. Thanks for joining us today. Andrea, yeah, it's my pleasure to be with you, always. And it's a difficult time for friends of Israel, including President Biden. He's just issued a new statement, and I wanted to update what we just had from Israel with what just came from the White House, Martin, uh, which he says, as a lifelong friend of Israel, President Biden, and this is from the press secretary, has publicly and privately expressed his views that major changes in a democracy to be enduring must have as broad a consensus as possible. It is unfortunate the vote today took place with the slimmest possible majority. We understand talks are ongoing and likely to continue over the coming weeks and months to forge a broader co compromise, even with the Knesset in recess. The United States, the Knesset, of course, is the parliament, as you well know. The United States will continue to support the efforts of President Herzog and other Israeli leaders as they seek to build a broader consensus through political dialogue. Emphasis was mine, and of course, President Herzog was here just last week for a, a visit in the Oval Office and a meeting, a joint meeting in Congress, a speech, uh, something that I am told from my sources in Israel was deeply upsetting to Netanyahu that he has still not been formally invited. It was discussed in a phone call that they would meet on the outskirts, probably, of the U.N. General Assembly in New York, but not a White House visit. So with all that said, and your great experience, Martin Indyk, where do we go next? Well, it's a, a dark day in Israel's history, 75 years on. The country has never uh, experienced such division. And uh, because the legislation is now passed, that division will grow greater. It's not going to go away. Uh, there is a long list of other legislation that the government has in mind to uh, complete its judicial uh, coup and to undermine the independence of the judiciary. And the Knesset, however, will go into recess uh, for the next uh, few, uh, couple of months. And so there will be a natural pause, at least in the legislative agenda. And uh, as the president, President Biden, has said, he's hoping that they'll use that time to try to forge a new consensus. Uh, I doubt it. President Herzog has not been able to, to play his mediating role to any good effect, unfortunately, not, not for want of trying. And I doubt that there were the sides both dug in now and the opposition even more determined to stop the next step in the legislation, uh, that it will be possible to reach a compromise. So I think we're in uncharted territory, and uh, it will indeed, indeed inevitably affect uh, the relationship with the United States. Do you think that we should be revisiting something that would be very politically explosive back here? with Donald Trump and most of the other Republican candidates inalterably in Bibi Netanyahu's camp, which would mean revisiting the security arrangements by which Israel, since the Camp David Accords in 1979, gets more foreign military and other aid than any other country? I actually don't think so, although I've been quoted uh, this week as calling for a reconsideration of uh, Israel's uh, dependence on American military assistance of something like $3.8 billion a year. Um, my view is that that's something that Israel should do for its own good, for, for its own independence and for its own ability to stand on its two, own two feet. U.S. military assistance is large by comparison to what we give to other countries, except, of course, for Ukraine. But it's de minimis when it comes to Israel's GDP of $520 billion. It's less than 1%. Uh, so I think Israel would be well off uh, to, to basically wean itself off this. But uh, military assistance to Israel is a holy cow in American politics. I don't believe the president would want to touch it. Where the strains in the relationship will, will show is, first of all, in continuing to keep a distance from Prime Minister Netanyahu. Maybe there'll be a 
a drive-by date at the uh, New York General UN General Assembly. But uh, I don't think he's going to be welcome in Washington anytime soon, since he's now repeatedly ignored the the gentle efforts by President Biden to get him to pause the legislation. It was, after all, not a big ask on the president's part. I think rather than touching Israel's security assistance, which is important for dealing with Israel's adversaries, uh, we could see a, a waning in American diplomatic and political support for Israel in international forums and, and elsewhere, because uh, this far-right government is questioning the very values, uh, democratic values, on which the relationship depends. Martin Indyk, Ambassador, as I say, great to see you and have your experience on the program again. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks so much. Thank you.